Welcome to Leewood United Methodist Church. Hi. Good day to you. <laughs> I'm avoiding saying good morning because there are people who may be watching this later during the day. So, okay, now I've already admitted it, so that's, I guess that's out there now. Uh, I'm Howard Johnson. I'm pastor here, for those of you who are not aware. I want to remind you of the welcome cards and the QR codes that are in your pew. If you want to fill out a welcome card with a special note or just say hi or have some kind of special prayer wish, you can do that physically on the card and put it in our offering plate. Or you can, uh, especially if you're at home, the QR code will be on your screen. I invite you to use your smartphone and, get, and hold your camera up to that. And then you can, it'll take you to a website to do the exact same thing. Share your thoughts, concerns, uh, whatever is on your mind. And I wanted to share a couple of things that are going on. Uh, the UMW Marketplace is coming up. And oh, isn't that nice? The Holiday Marketplace for Munitions. And it just shows up on screen just like that. Isn't that amazing? And I want to make sure that I like the line on the bottom of that that's 100% of proceeds support local and global missions of the United Methodist Women. And there's all kinds of great things that they make and produce for this. So I hope you participate in that. It is going to, oh, and here we go. Here we have some samples. This is awesome. The, we have a, a lot of very talented and capable people who work on this, and it's, it's a great joy. And also, it's, you kind of need to make sure you get there to get the one you want, I think, is maybe the little warning I would offer, <clears throat> so you're aware of that. Another thing that's coming up is we're anxious to have people sign up for Come to the Manger on December 19th. We have people who are starting to volunteer, who are wanting to participate in that. That's our Christmas pageant on that Sunday. So. There will be some practice time and that sort of thing, but if you're at all interested, uh, let us know. Also, on, on next Sunday, around 2 o'clock, there's going to be a meet, greet, and eat gathering with our district superintendent. To clarify that, that is not, that is not our charge conference. Our charge conference technically is happening this Tuesday with our church council doing the charge conference. And there is a significant difference in there and that the DS is mainly focused next Sunday on having opportunity to spend time with uh, folks from churches at various tables. And it's going to be over at the, uh, at the Korean church over here on Nall, just off 95th. So uh, if you're able to attend, everyone's welcome. Uh, it's just a neat opportunity if you want to meet who our new district superintendent is. And his intention is to kind of get a more informal understanding about who, the, who our church is and who some of the people in our church are. So I share that with you. I invite you to move into a time of prayer with me. O oh God of all goodness, you welcome us. Forgive us and heal us. You seek us out from places where we have hidden from you. You crown us with steadfast love and mercy. Reveal yourself to us in this moment. Let us know your presence so that we may bless you. Bless you, O oh God, bless your holy name. Amen.
Please stand as you're able for the call to worship. <clears throat> we may be thirsty and parched like an unwatered garden, so we come into God's presence. We may be weary from worry and work, so we come into God's presence. We may be lost or confused, so we come into God's presence. We may be bent over with struggle or pain, so we come into God's presence. And let us raise our voices in song together for our opening hymn, God Whose Love is Reigning O'er Us. It's time for the children's message, I think.
What's what's the matter? Who is? Regina's supposed to be here? Distracted. I was a little distracted. Are you guys ever distracted? Are your parents ever distracted? A little bit? Let me just put this down because this adult is guilty at least. Um, what are some things that distract you guys? A book. Well done, parents. What else? A phone ringing is distracting. Should I, dare I ask anyone that's a grown-up out here something that distracts you? <laughs> that's a good one, too. I think we all, we all get distracted, and I know I can do a lot better at paying attention to things. So I'm going to read a couple of Bible verses. If you're listening, ears are on. Okay. This is from Matthew, and... Jesus says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. That means we probably should listen. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What was that last thing he said? I am with, oh, she got it, with you until the end of the age. Hmm. I think it's even after you die. Yeah, I think it is. So do you guys believe that Jesus is always with you? Yes. Good. I'm confident that's always the case. Do you think Jesus is always with other people? Yeah. And it says here that we're supposed to be disciples. And if you're a disciple, that means that you're like Jesus. And you follow Jesus. So let's think about Jesus for a second. Jesus loves everybody. Do you think that Jesus was distracted? Yes. You do? What about you? Do you think Jesus was distracted? Maybe? I don't think so. I don't think that Jesus is ever distracted. I think Jesus' listening ears are always on. <laughs> Thank you. And I do think that he's always listening to us. I remember a Bible story about a woman who was really, really sick, and nobody could help her. And Jesus was in a big crowd with lots of people and lots of noise, maybe like Fall Fest yesterday. And all the woman did is she reached out, and she touched Jesus' clothing. And what happened is Jesus healed her. He healed her. She touched his clothing, and he noticed it. So do you think that's distraction? Not at all. We can get distracted by so many things in this world, guys. But I want you to remember that Jesus is never distracted. And he wants you guys to be like him. So that means if you're with your family, you need to pay attention to them. Oh, thanks. Hi. He's my family. Or if you're with friends, you need to pay attention to them. Think about the words you say and how you say them and how you can help other people. Because I really think, thanks for the kiss, that's how God wants us to be. So... I have one thing here, because I know it's sometimes hard for us to think about one thing. So this is called a centering prayer, and we're going to do it as we breathe. So when we breathe in, we're going to do two things, breathe in and breathe out. When we breathe in, we think in our heads, Jesus. And when we breathe out, slowly, Sam's hyperventilating, we think, loves me. And then, doesn't Jesus love others too? So we're going to breathe in and say, Jesus, and breathe out and say, loves you. Let's do that a few times. 
Breathe in. Jesus, breathe out. Loves me. Breathe in. Jesus, breathe out. Loves you. There is a song about that, too. You're right. So can we close in a prayer? If you guys will join us, we'll all say amen really heartily at the end. Jesus, you are our God. Help us focus on you. Thank you for your words of love for us. Please help us focus on others, too. May our hearts, hands, feet, heads, words, and actions be surrounded in God's peace and love. And all God's children said, Amen! Amen. I invite you to enter an experience of prayer. Today, O God, we are reminded by your holy word of what people of faith are like. We are reminded of their joy and trust in you. We are reminded of how they care for one another and reach out to help their brothers and sisters. We are reminded of how your presence in their lives conquers their doubts and fears. Lord, work strongly in us and conform our lives to the example of Jesus and of all those with a living faith. Help us walk in your glorious light and rejoice in your saving truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we recall how the sadness of the disciples was turned to joy and of how their fear was turned to courage by your risen presence. Help us show your presence and your present reality to all those around us who dwell in fear and sadness. Help us and the people of Christ everywhere to bring comfort to those who grieve, strength to those who are ill, and blessing to all those in need. Lord, hear our prayer, too, for those in special need of your presence this day. We ask that your spirit may touch those we name before you in the silence of our hearts, that your son might visit them and speak a word of healing, that your nameless servants in this world might bring unto them your comfort and your grace. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, O God, for your power and presence in our lives. Make us known as a people who share that power and presence, so that the glory we intend to give unto you may be given by all, and so that our joy may be complete in Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray as one saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew, the very end of the book, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Therefore go, this is going to sound so familiar to you. I mean, we've heard it in song, we heard it in the children's moment, I mean, you know. So if you want to say it along with me, feel free. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. May God add his, God's, God's wisdom to the interpretation of these words. Now, there's many ways to think about presents. Uh, and I'm talking Christmas here yet. 
we're not there yet because we don't hear, start hearing Christmas music till after Halloween, right? Is that, I mean, we, we hear, or maybe you've received them, some of you who are probably going to attend a wedding here in November, you know, your presence is requested at the marriage of, and it, it's kind of this sense of being included as a witness, as a part of something. In church, it's, your presence often means you're counted, Kind of like all of us tried to guess how many people were actually here yesterday at our, <laughs> at our drunk or treat event. Which, by the way, some of you are present here who were there. I would like to ask Regina to stand. I'd like Stacy in the booth to stand. I'd like Sarah to stand. Actually, <laughs> and Gavin. Yeah, there. And then I was going to ask everybody else to stand who was actually here, who was present last night for this event. It's okay to admit it. Uh, I mean, whether you were just had a trunk or whether you were just participating, you experienced the presence, right, of being here. I mean, what did we give out between 12 and 1,400 bags of popcorn? I mean, it was hard not to experience presence last night. Uh, and, there's, and there's a dynamic that occurs uh, and any gathering is changed or affected and influenced because people are there, because you are there. And we don't often ponder that. Uh, and we experience that just in, just by the sheer numbers of people flowing through and the amount of candy we went through. <laughs> uh, people's presence was quite important and obvious. But there's different kinds of presence. There's I mean, I, I, you probably have heard me confess about uh, our time in running a bakery in Ottawa, Kansas. Uh, one of the people I worked with at night was a fellow named Joe Bristow. God rest his soul. Uh, a fascinating character. He was the state wrestling champion when he was in high school. And he'd been a milk truck driver for a long time. And he was part of our uh, evening team. And he actually, in the end, ended up purchasing the business from us and worked all night learning everything he could. He was one of those people who arrived on a day when we were short-staffed and just dove in excitedly to learn. But Joe was 6'8 and weighed 300 pounds. And his presence was obvious. And we, we had some high school kids who, which unlike children of today, were being somewhat nuisances and driving around late at night and going by the back bakery door and pounding on the door and running away thinking, oh, isn't this fun? And, and so Joe and I saw them driving by the front of the store and we snuck out the back door. You got to picture somebody 6'8", 300 pounds, sneaking. I just I can't overemphasize what that experience is like. And we snuck out to the very back. Our back door was off the alley, so we snuck all the way up past the parking and stood right by the edge of the alley. <clears throat> So they were down about two feet or so. And as they pulled in, they jumped out to go knock on the door, and Joe and I stepped out. And Joe's standing almost a foot and a half taller than they are already. And their faces indicated their experience of his presence. <laughs> and maybe there was other evidence too. I don't know. But all I know, all I know is that they recognized and experienced what it was like to be in Joe's presence. Uh, <laughs> But on a more serious note, when we, when we experience each other's presence, even here now, there's a sense of community. And sometimes that comes with both, in community, sometimes the experience is both of acceptance and security, but also expectation. Expectations tied in there. So, so truly being present means being there, as Regina was referring to in her late uh, attempt to do the children's moment coming up. Um, you know, being there implies that you're contributing to this. Each of you are contributing to our experience here today. I mean, you go to a Royals game or a Chiefs game, you, you contribute to the present, sometimes boisterously, correct? Uh, maybe a tad out of control. Uh, you know, the whole dynamics change. Some of you may have noted the difference in the experience of those events when there was nobody in the stands. You know, and then you look at the experience when there are people present. Presence matters. Uh, and, 
you know, there's different kinds of crowds. There's an unruly crowd. That can be rather difficult. But sometimes there's just kind of unified experience of a crowd or, an, a, or a human experience of, of community and presence. Um, which made me wonder, why is it we don't cheer and roar in church much? But that's another story. That's another sermon probably. But as I thought about that, I think our silent presence makes a contribution. Even though we do sing together and we sit together in times of prayer, that silent presence is big. And, and our presence in church brings a spiritual dimension to life. Uh, you can feel a person's focus. And, and there's, a, there's a bunch of different uh, things out there on Facebook and some of the social media that are talking about, you know, that people need to get off the sofa and quit watching at home or, you know, you know, watching on the couch isn't enough. But, you know, being present matters wherever you are. I was thinking about as the choir was singing, I've been in choirs before where you have the experience and are usually reminded by a very helpful choir director as the one we have, who undoubtedly is somewhat relieved not to have to remind our choir to smile now that they have masks on. <laughs> that was the one thing about every choir in every church I've ever been in or every church I've been to that had a choir, it was like, can you not smile while you're singing? <laughs> you know, it was, it, was a, it was a constant battle. Interesting, interesting, especially when you're one of the people who's singing. It's like, no, I'm busy singing. I can't be smiling. Um, but the other unique thing about this is that, guess what? The choir can see you too. You know, that your presence is there. So what you convey by your presence, what you convey, convey with your face makes a difference. Um, in Bible study, interesting enough, we, we bring presence to God's word by us being there. It's interesting. The dynamic I'm always fascinated by when we do Bible study together, that each person brings this, not only their physical presence, but it brings kind of a spiritual interpretive presence to what we're talking about. And there's a certain uh, vulnerability and connection that happens. It's a connection with God's word, with God, and with each other. Now, in reading the scripture today, did you feel the power of God's presence in that scripture? I know Regina emphasized it. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I mean, don't we all yearn for that? <laughs> Isn't that something we yearn for deeply? But as we hear this story, I would remind you there's, there's more going on here as often when we look at scripture, there's a lot more going on than first meets the eye. Um, consider this. At the end of the book of Matthew, we have to think about everything that's happened. Crucifixion, all the denials. We have to think of all the things that have gone on. All the suffering, the fear that Jesus is really dead. All those things. Uh, women going to the tomb and discovering that it's empty. And they're invited to go and tell the disciples to show up. To go and be present at this mountain where Jesus will appear to them. And they're all asked to go. I mean, the, first the women are asked to go and tell the disciples. And then the disciples themselves are reminded by the risen, by, to, to go and show up and meet Jesus. So 11 disciples, at least... But there were clearly doubters in the group. Some who probably weren't fully sure why they were going. Some who didn't believe the stories of the women or weren't even sure what they experienced. And yet when they all showed up, when they were all present, they all received the commission to go and they received the promise of Jesus' presence with them for always. It was a wide open welcome. All they really had to do was show up. You know, and we can understand this from our own experience. We too are called to go where Jesus will meet us. We too are called to worship. We are directed to the place where we will meet the living Christ, yet wonder, one might wonder why anyone would listen. 
Perhaps it is the hope that the message might be true and that by coming to the community where Jesus promises to meet people, he might meet us as well. So we come to see if Christ will keep his promise. God's presence changes everything, doesn't it? Just as our own presence does. Our presence makes a huge difference. When we were living in Baldwin and serving a church down in that area, um, there was a couple who attended every basketball and football game. An older couple, long after their kids were long gone out of, the, out of those activities, continued to attend every single home basketball or football game. This is not a huge town. And people knew them and recognized them. And, and later in life, there was a time of recognition for them having done that. But their presence to cheer on whoever was playing, whatever the outcome was, had this kind of growing influence on people's understanding of what it meant to be part of that community. And their, their experience was a, and practice was a lifelong testimony of support. All because they showed up. In my own work as pastor over the years, I've come to realize that when I walk into a hospital room, by my present, a new presence, a new dynamic happens. And it's something we've talked a lot about in, as pastors when we're going through training and learning. Um, sometimes people might experience it as if I'm bringing God into the room. <laughs> but that's not what's happening at all. God's already there. Sometimes by my presence, when I walk in, people realize God's there. Which, by the way, takes a lot of responsibility off me, just so you understand. <laughs> God's presence is already there. We've already got the promise from Jesus. I'm with you to the end of the age. Our presence sometimes simply reminds people of the truth. And our presence conveys a message to God, to others, to ourselves. When we come to worship, when we in essence are declaring we stand with God, we stand with God's people, when our focus is elsewhere, like on our cell phone or some of the examples we heard earlier, what happens? Well, at home, if, if that happens, our dog gets really annoyed. If at home it happens and you have children, you know what happens. Uh, especially younger children, the minute you start talking on your phone, uh, they come over and ask a million questions and immediately try to interrupt, right? Isn't that, the, isn't that the way it works? Because we're not fully present. See, as I'm thinking about what it means to be present, what it means to be part of a church, it doesn't mean we have to show up all the time. I mean, that, there's truth in that for sure. But our absence diminishes our connection. I mean, if you just ask those persons who are watching us online right now, who are thinking to themselves, I would wish <laughs> I could be present, but I can't take that risk. Those persons understand presence. They know what they're missing. Our goal is not to, to guilt people about being present and coming to worship. Our goal is to help us understand the value and power of presence in our lives. And recognizing the power and value of God's presence in our life. See, without it, we miss out on spiritual energy within us, within the gathered community. And I believe the entire world is affected. So what I invite you to do today is think about your presence. Where and how you show up in worship, how you engage God's words, how you live your daily life, and maybe begin to describe how you'd like to become more present in all you do. What steps would you take or what challenging exercises would you do? Would you have an accountability partner? Your presence and learning about the power of our presence can become part of a discipline, like regular exercise. You know, if you want to get physically stronger, you go to the gym to work out. And if you only go once a month, you may not have a lot of results. Um, but if we do it with a buddy, or we do it with a friend, or if we do it and invite 
a sense of shared community, maybe things would be different. I know I can go worship on the golf course, but I'll probably strengthen my golf game more than my faith. And in my case, I wouldn't really strengthen either one very much. The question is, what is to be gained? What is to be lost? Drawing closer to God is our goal. Jesus is our trainer, our manager, our encourager, and reminds us that God's presence in Jesus Christ isn't going to change. I am with you always, to the end of the age. God calls us to be God's light in the darkness, God's voice in the wilderness, and God's hope for the hopeless. May our offerings today help others see God through our actions. Let us gather our gifts with gratitude and praise.
God, it's amazing all that you have already given us. Please accept these gifts, these presents, and our presence as signs of our faith in you and our love for you. Use both to your will. Amen. Send forth by God's blessing our true faith confessing the people of God from this dwelling take leave the service is ended or oh, now be extended the fruits of our worship in all who be Since we were talking about presents, I guess I should say thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for showing up. Go and show up in your life. Be present. Draw yourself close to God and to others. Jesus will be with you. Amen.